Hey everyone, welcome back to Triple R Reaper. Looky there, it's a bounce. OG bounce. I cannot believe I finally have one of these. Such a beast. I got an awesome deal on this guy. He actually came with a baby, and then I sold the baby and almost got half my money back. Uh, I'll just tell you, essentially, I got this thing for 300 bucks, and that's a three-inch disc, so absolute steal. So um, uh, I guess I'll go over a few things that's new in the tank, and then I'll touch on my topic, which is carbon dosing. Uh, this guy here, how about a red velvet fairy res? Oh my, man, I've been wanting one of these guys at least two years, minimum two years. Dang, Ross. Um, so, Ocean Devotion LA came through again. God, I can't recommend those guys enough or Adam enough. Um, I, I, he surprised me. I didn't even know he was going to be getting one. He just knew it was on my list and ended up getting one for me. Uh, he's down in the sump. I'm going to let him kind of chill out here for maybe one or two days. He's already eating. This is his first day in, but he's already eating. Seems good to go, but before I put him in the uh, in the uh, chaos, which is the tank upstairs uh, with all the monsters, I'm gonna let him settle in. He will probably have his work cut out for him, but he'll be all right. Spread the aggression. Did a little fragging. Got a hellfire two head. I actually cut another one and ended up accidentally cutting into the head of it. And um, I ended up giving someone a really good deal on it. Let them know the risk, black brown jelly and whatnot. Um, and they were happy. So they got a good deal. Told them the risk. Tell them what to do if they get brown jelly. But they got an awesome torch. It's a double head as well. Uh, Frag my orange hammer. Uh, she ended up getting one of those as well. Frag my Aiken colony up. Flip a few of these guys. I knew a few Zoas too. Um, my SPS pack came in. About half of them were uh, DOA. They, the, one of the bags was just terribly smelling and it just stunk. Um, it just had a terrible smell. And uh, But uh, they're hooking me up, gonna replace them. No biggie. It's what happens when you ship, ship in the summertime. So I gotta put this frag rack in the tank and let these. Uh, these uh, tangs go to work. You see the sea lettuce coming down here. I've been dropping uh, one or two frags into the display and just letting them have at them. And they've been doing an awesome job. Anyway, enough of the sump. Enough of the fun down there. Up top, and these colors are not great. I, had, I didn't put it in pro mode because uh, I wanted to be able to film the sump too, and the colors are just so different. Got a little mandarin. Um, yeah, he's not little. He is probably the biggest mandarin I've ever seen. Um, I got him from Marine Collectors. Elliot, I actually specifically asked for a large male. And boy, he come through. Guys, huge. Uh, surprising, actually, when I saw him. I said, God, I did not realize he even got that big. Uh, anyway, fully quarantined. Marine Collectors, always great to deal with. There's what's left of the gold torch. It was twice that. Uh, everything else looking good. I don't know what else y'all haven't seen. It's been a minute. Let me shut this so you don't have to hear these fans. Man, this heat around here. Southeast Texas got some heat. I got the fans blasting, AC going. Man, I do not like these colors. Oh well, y'all still get the idea. It's pretty in there. Got this new rock up here. Uh, black rocks, magnetic on both sides. Supposed to be reef safe. I'm gonna keep an eye on those magnets though. You never know when they're gonna not do what they're supposed to do, which is stay sealed. But you know, it's part of reefing. Everything can fail. I had an MP40 uh, wet side. I do maintenance once every maybe two weeks on them. I just swap out my MP40 wet side with a new one. I noticed the shaft was rusting, which I get that a lot, man. I don't know what's going on with their their 
their quality control if it's just my luck or something but they always take care of me so i'm not really worried about it but you know it's kind of an inconvenience i guess um but at least they have great customer service ecotech uh sold i uh, had sold the clan a while back and finally he's gone now i got the the other big brother he's twice as big as the other one and i got him at the same time they were the same size so he's definitely the bigger of the two uh, as far as growers oh look at this guy finding my another new home i'm gonna hang out in this little hole right here zip blue spot jawfish are just a cool fish uh let's see i think that's it as far as the tank goes on new stuff everybody's doing good a little bigger than with the cold tank he's a little nipped up i have to keep an eye on that he's actually the aggressor in a lot of cases i i was surprised uh but anyway you know they fight it is what it is they uh they spread the aggression out and that's what matters this uh captain brady yellow tank was torn up three four weeks ago he's already healed up looking great you know they tangs are going to be tangs i've i've had a 240 a seven foot 240 and i promise you they will fight just as much tangs are spazzes okay they're spazos uh anyway check out my video on tangs if you want to know how to put more tangs than what you probably should in your tank uh spoiler alert it's get extra tangs all right uh let's talk about carbon dosing so you know facebook I really, I try, I really try to um, not get into little tips with people on Facebook. It's stupid, okay? You're arguing with someone for really no reason, um, other than maybe your ego. So I get it, uh, and I hate when I do it. I get dragged in, and I just like, oh, I don't say anything, but I have to. Um, so I got a uh, Facebook tip, whatever, about carbon dosing a tank that's struggling with just their skimmer, okay? Uh, first of all, for those of y'all don't know what carbon dosing is, carbon dosing is basically adding a source of carbon such as nopox, vodka, sugar, uh, something like that. It's gonna help increase the bacteria that actually consume nitrate and phosphate. Now we'll save this real quick. Carbon dosing really helps more with nitrates than does phosphates, at least from my experience and what I've read, it does help with phosphates a little bit. And actually I contribute uh, dosing, uh, carbon dosing, to helping me with my phosphates. But I used to have an issue with phosphates and now I don't, uh, it's more nitrates. But it's uh, in a state level. Uh, quickly, God dang, what a ramble. Uh, I did get the new nitrate checker. That thing is gold. I love that thing. Um, easy 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 to use um there's no reason to buy anything else in my opinion all right moving on uh real quick though my nitrates were 13 on my last test yesterday phosphates were 0 0.06 or 0 0.07 anyway they're they're lower than uh they're good so uh carbon dosing that's what that is you know you can dose vodka you can dose uh sugar you can dose nopox there's a few other ones on the market that are basically just carbon dosing. Uh, but essentially what you want to do on carbon dosing is, I guess number one, pick which one you want to use. Get a doser and do not buy a crappy doser, okay? It's so easy to kill your tank carbon dosing. I can't explain that enough. I, I can't stress that enough, okay? Actually, it's easy to kill your tank with a lot of things, but carbon dosing really is very uh it's very risky because basically what you're doing is creating a bacteria in your in your tank and if you overfeed that bacteria they're going to explode and they're going to be in a bacterial bloom and then they're going to suck up all the oxygen in your tank and it's going to kill your fish uh with this many fish uh, i basically don't have a choice but to make sure i do this right you also need a really good skimmer a good skimmer meaning that it can't be one that uh is just absolute garbage uh, it needs to be able to pull out the bacteria that you're producing to remove those uh, nitrates um, that said uh, what i was arguing about again stupid the guy i actually know him had a niles 220 on a 240 gallon tank it's pretty heavily stocked basically in the same situation as what i'm in but with a 240 okay 
My skimmer is much smaller than his, but we had a very similar bio load. Maybe he's a little bit bigger. Um, but he's having trouble with his nitrates and phosphates. Didn't know what carbon dosing was. No biggie. Some people don't. Um, but he wanted to know what else he could do. I said, well, carbon dosing. All right. I basically, I said, uh, let me introduce you to my friend carbon dosing. Just making a joke. Because, you know, carbon dosing is easy. Um, um, but it's, it's one of those ones you want to do right. Um, so anyway, got into that. A guy just says, hey, uh, that's stupid. Uh, that's the worst thing you can do for your tank. If his skimmer's already underperforming, why would you have him put uh, something that you need a good skimmer for? Which technically he's right about needing a good skimmer, but what I was trying to explain, and maybe I came off rude too, ah, whatever, uh, is that you need, you need to realize that carbon do a skimmer pulls out organics before they come become nitrate and phosphate, okay? It can't be already in the water, okay? It doesn't work that way. It's going to pull out uh, organics that are not broken down yet, so they can't be a nitrate and phosphate. And essentially what I was saying was is that carbon dosing is going to aid the bacteria to pull those out, and then the skimmer can take, have its load taken off because um, you, you know, you're transferring the load to the bacteria, which is really what you would want. In a nitrogen cycle, you want bacteria to be your friend. You want that to be your, your source of uh, removing nitrates and phosphates in a perfect world. Now, that is not the case, I'll say, in most, most systems. Uh, you know, um, Ketomorpha and some of these other algaes, they're really good. There's, there's other systems you can use, but anyway, before I get off into that, I guess I just, I wanted to explain that. And he's like, no, that's stupid. You're, you're, you're overloading your skimmer. That's not how you're supposed to do it. Um, anyway, he tried to make his points, whatever. Okay, so that said, you do you, okay? This is your tank. If you don't want a carbon dose, that's fine. If you want to get you a bigger skimmer, that's great. I don't care. Um, that's your tank I always say that you do what you want to in your tank but just know this I am doing it now this tank is way overloaded okay way overloaded and I am able to maintain my phosphate and nitrate um, not with an oversized skimmer um, I feed this tank six cube, five to six cubes a day and I feed also I feed um, uh, pellets and I sometimes I dose Red Sea A B plus. Tons going in this tank, okay? I hardly ever do water changes. Um, so just know that carbon dosing is a really good thing to use as a as a tool to remove nitrates and phosphates. Um, it should not be your only source. I would, I would definitely stress that. Um, but uh, if you want to use it, it's a great tool. Okay, it's a, it's a good tool in the toolbox. Um, Let's see, what else? How to do it. Um, I, I know I've kind of already touched on that, but get yourself a good doser. Um, BRS, the one mil a minute is a good one because you're not, it's unlikely that that's gonna quickly overdose your tank. Um, but I use the, I use the dose. So I use the dose and um, I, I let it do its thing. Dose to me is a very reliable doser. Don't get me wrong, they've had their faults. Um, nothing's perfect. Uh, but a good doser, okay? Get you a good doser. Um, and then it's very, very, very important. I can't really listen to this part. When you start carbon dosing, you have to start at less than what they recommend. I don't know why these people have came up with what they came up with as far as a number. But let's say that your dose is 10 mils uh, per gallon, whatever it is. I don't know. I haven't looked at the bottle. I dose 12 mil, uh, milliliters a day. Um, you're going to start at half of the recommended dose. And if you want to start lower than that, that's great too, okay? Oh, carbon overdosing is dangerous, okay? Uh, so start at half the dose. If you got any questions on that, it's pretty self-explanatory, but just do half the dose and run that for, I don't know, two weeks, okay? Carbon dosing is not quick either, okay? Run that for two weeks. Add a couple milliliters, depending on your volume, system volume. And slowly, 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 gradually raise that. Now you're gonna to need to check, I would say at least once a week, twice a week would probably be best. 
because you don't want to bottom out your nitrates. Um, or at least I wouldn't recommend that. But um, be checking. And so basically, once you see them starting to drop, cut your dose in half, okay? Now you're going to be maintaining with that dose. And if you need a little more, check that, you know, once a week and see where you're at. You know, depending on if your numbers are creeping up, you'll be able to kind of figure out what your maintenance dose is. Simple, easy to do, um, does require skimmer. Um, and real quick too, because um, I've ran into this, if you ever have to run ChemiClean and you are carbon dosing, uh, you need to keep your skimmer on, just take the top off, okay? You need, uh, you need that aeration in the tank. You're not gonna be removing that bacteria, so I would absolutely uh, cut your dosing in half, carbon dosing in half. Um, you don't want to stop carbon dosing cold turkey as well. All right, that's basically it, guys. That's a 16-minute video, standard long-ass video. Apologies. Did give me a new Zola rock, and my Hefe Estes might have Zola pox, so that is absolutely sucky. But I've got a, I've got a little bill for that to fear them too. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Uh, seriously, appreciate everybody subscribing and commenting. Uh, it means a lot. Again, thousand subscribers would be awesome. So if you don't mind, just click that subscribe button. If you want to like the video, great. If you want to dislike the video, that's also cool with me. I would like the like button better. But uh, quick, quick um, plug, I guess, for Aquatic Bob's YouTube. That guy is he's very down to earth, and I see a lot of similarities in our tanks and how we do reefing and how we approach reefing. Um, check his check his YouTube channel out if you haven't already. Aquatic Bob, um, very very cool dude, um, very nice guy. All right, everyone. Oh, quickly, look at that home record. Bam. Okay, that's as white as white as I can get it, and that is. Eh, not really exactly what I'm seeing, but damn, it's close. Pop, pop, pop. Okay, a little home record shot. Had to finish it up there. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video.